13, 14. He said to Abraham, lift up your eyes from where you are. And look from the place where you are, northward, southward, eastward, and westward. You see, your eyes are very, very important for you. As a natural man, you all know that without the eyes, you really can't do anything. And Jesus speaking in Matthew chapter 6. He said, your eyes is the lamp of your body. <laughs> he wasn't just talking about your physical eyes. He was talking about the eyes of your understanding. Your ability to see, look and comprehend. Not just see. Not just look at things and see them for what they are. So God was telling Abraham here. Yes, the plain of Jordan that looks where water has been taken. But you know what? Lift up your eyes above that which has been taken. And I came to say to someone here this morning, lift up your eyes above that which you have lost. Stop mourning over that which has been lost. Lift up your eyes above it. I dated a guy for seven years and he left me. Hey, lift up your eyes. Something better is coming. Yeah. I invested in a business for so many years. And at the point where I was supposed to begin to reap, my partner went away with the money. Lift up your eyes. Praise God. And I want to say a few things about your eyes. You see, your eyes is like a gateway to your life. It's not like, it's a gateway to your life. Because the Bible says, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. And you think with the eyes of your mind, you know? Your mind is from where you think from. You can see things, but until it registers in your mind... It doesn't really make meaning to you. Is that true? I can see this cam camera now. But if I don't know anything about it. And nothing registers in my mind. I can't make any meaning out of it. And every blessing that God will bring your way. God needs you to see it. Let's go quickly to Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11. All right, let's read together. He said, I know what I'm doing. I have it all what? Planned out. Plans to take care of you, not abandon you. Plans to give you the future that I want for you. Uh oh. The future that God wants for you. Not the one that God wants for you. The one that you hope for. The one that you can see in your mind. The one that you can dream of in your mind. The one that you hope for. What's your hope? What do you see? That's the one he wants to give you. Not the one he has planned for. Let me balance it here. God has planned for you a good future. But what he's saying to you through this verse is that until you can see it, hey baby, I can hand it over to you. Or you can receive it because I've given it already. But you've got to see it to be able to what? Take it. The future that you want, hope for. Everybody say the future that I see. So the fact that you are not walking into that future is not because God doesn't want to give it to you. Is because you've not been able to what? 
see it. You will see it from today. That's the reason for faith exploits. So that you can what? See. And not see small, small again. But see where? See big. See where? He says you are the head. And not the what? The tail. You see, the devil cannot make you small until you see yourself as small. So, Pastor Justin, what's the assignment of the devil? The devil's assignment or what he can do is to try to alter what you see in your mind. Are you listening to me? He wants to alter it. So, from the birth, from the day you were born, he's programming. From the day you were born again, his programming is to make sure that what you can see here does not align to the word of God. But he has said, glory to God. He doesn't want that picture to align to what God wants or intends for you. That's why somebody will look at us ever and say, um, I just have anger problem. I'm, I'm an angry person. The Bible says the love of Christ has been shared abroad in your heart. That's the picture of who you are. You were born out of love. The love of Christ dwells in you. The nature of God is in you. But until you agree with that which God has said concerning you, you can't walk in it. You have to agree. He told, he told him, he said, what do you see? You see, you must guard the gates of your eyes. The devil is intentional. Are you, are, are you listening to me? The devil is intentional. That's why from childhood, what you are dealing with right now, he started programming them into your heart from childhood. It's a programming. And that's why God also himself is conscious about programming. He said, for all the land which you want, see, I give to what? To you. And in case you are not able to enjoy all the land, or the, the land is too much for you, your descendants are also covered in this land. You leave an inheritance for your children's children. He's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all you can ask or do what? Think. So you've got to what? See. I want to give it to you. I have planned for it for you already. In short, that was the reason I gave my son. So that you can assess it. Hey, but there is a key to you assessing it. You must allow your eyes, the eyes of your understanding, your heart, to see it. And then when you have grabbed it, you are seen it. Don't let the devil beat it out of your hand. That's why he said to us in Proverbs, he said, guard your heart with all what? All diligence, for out of it are the what? Issues of life. I tell people every time, I say it's not the issue. It's what the issue registers in your heart. You can go through so many issues. But the problem is, what do you come out with from that issue? That's why some people go through a breakup and they come out and say, man has come. They has come. Once the devil has succeeded in making you feel that man has come, it's a finished project. He walks away. She'll never have a good marriage. Because as a man thinks in his heart, so, uh, so is he. So who are you going to attract? Because that's what you see men as. And who are you going to attract? You want to hear more? Come to the singles meeting. Yeah. 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 So give me the next verse. I want to show you how God was helping Abraham to create a picture. Hit somebody for me. Tell the person, keep the picture clear in your heart. Look at it. He said, and I will make, God is still giving Abraham a vision. He's still giving him what to see, what to think. He said, and I will make your descendants. As the dust of the earth. He didn't have a child at this time. Did he have a child at this time? But God was doing what? Creating a picture. Hey parents. Don't stop that child from dreaming. 
If the child says, I'm going to buy you a jet, don't say, hey, stop that. Don't be talking like that. Hey, let the child what? Train. Let him buy you a jet. Let him talk. Everybody must not be like you. You couldn't buy your parents a jet, but let that child buy you what? A jet. See, he didn't have a child. But he said, I will make your descendants as the dust of the earth. He said, so that if a man could count, could number the dust of the earth, then your descendants also will be numbered. Could Abraham dream it? He was trying to break the containment, destroy the containment. You are thinking, God, if God, you can just give me a child. And God is saying, your descendants are going to be like the dust of the earth. God is passionate about our oh God wants you to see the way he sees. And the only way you can begin to see the way God sees is through his word. The word. Allow the word to create a picture in your heart. Go to the next verse. Look at this. He's, he's still allowing, he's still making Abraham become fully conscious of it. What did he say here? Arise. Do what? Walk where? In the land. Walk, walk. Walk. Think about it. See yourself living in that beautiful marriage. See yourself with that beautiful wife, like my husband has. Who listens to him? You understand? See yourself serving God faithfully. See yourself a soul winner. See yourself a financier of the gospel. Don't let anybody talk you down of it. Giving all your money to church. If you don't have, you can't give. It means if you are going to finance the church, God is going to pass well through you. And I declare that that will be your portion in the name of Jesus. Arise, walk in the land through its length and its width. For I have done what I give it to what you. In other words, there's no scarcity with me. It's not about me. It's about who you. What do you see? In that marriage, what do you see? My parents were always fighting. I don't understand. Why am I talking about marriage so much? There's somebody that needs it. My dad struggled in business. And uh, I don't think... Hey, let me tell you, those thoughts will always come. But don't allow them to stay. When they come like this, catch them. And destroy them. When you can't do that in your mind, speak out. He says you will not excel. Say the path of the just is like a shining light. I am the just. And it shines brighter and brighter Onto a perfect day. Give me Second Kings now. Second Kings six, from verse sixteen. Give me. See, you see the way God painted picture to Abraham. That's the way you should paint picture to yourself. Paint it. When you paint it to a point, the Bible says, "Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth does what speaks." When you paint and paint in your heart, at a point, your mouth will begin to what speak. I speak all the time. Look at it. He says, so he answered. You know the story. I'm going to give you, give you a brief of the story. He says, so he answered. Do not fear for those who are with us are more than those who are with them. This was when the armies of Syria came against um, Elisha because Elisha had been giving out the secret of the king of Syria. Their battle secret. Elisha has been hearing whatever the king was saying in his secret place. And giving the secrets to the children of Israel. So all the plans failed. And so they decided to come and bab or carry Elisha. Praise God. And when they came, Gehazi saw the place that all the armies of Syria, they had surrounded Elisha. And when Elisha woke up, Gehazi was afraid. Like, master, we are done for. And look at the statement of Elisha. Elisha said, do not fear. For those that are with us are more 
than those who are with. You think Elisha saw a vision right there? The Bible did not say Elisha saw a vision. You know what? In his place of relationship with God, in his place of meditation, he had come to know that he was not alone. God was with him. What do you know in your place of work with God? It is those knowings that you can speak out unconsciously that sees you through in the days of battle. Not the one you try to quickly read that minute. That was what was happening to Elisha. Elisha was speaking out of his knowing. Pray in tongues for a few minutes. Christianity is not religion. Christianity is not about coming to church. But you must come to church to hear about God. You must serve God to walk with him. You can't be a friend of the person you don't see. You say he's my close friend, but you don't see. Is it possible? It's not possible. So this was Elisha. He was speaking out of his work and out of his knowledge of God. He was saying, I know we are not alone. What do you say? Some people are so full of fear. I might die young. I really don't know what's ahead. Those are the pictures the enemy wants you to see and speak. But you must not see and speak those pictures. But you know what? Let me tell you something. There is no way you will not see and speak those pictures if all you see is social media. If all you see is all and hear is what the news is saying. Let the word of God create that picture for you. Hey, hit somebody and say, let the word of God create the picture. You know what it says in Colossians chapter 3 verse 1? It says, let the word of God dwell richly in your heart. He didn't say God will make the word of God dwell richly in your heart. He said, you should what? You should let it. Who should let it? Hallelujah. Let's go to the next verse. He said, and Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray, open his eyes that he may what? Open his eyes that he may what? See. That was the prayer. When you see, some fears will leave your life. Yes. When you see, some things you have been trying to manipulate and get in a wrong way, you will stop it. Do you see what he prayed for Gehazi? He said, open his eyes that he may what? See. Give me Matthew. Matthew chapter 13. Let me show you a scripture there. In them, let's, let's read together. He said, in them, the prophecy of Isaiah is what? Fulfilled. Which says, hearing you will hear and shall not what? That will not be your portion in the name of Jesus. There are many that are hearing, but they do not what? And he said again, and seeing you will what? And not what? So you can see and not what? Perceive. You can hear and not what? Understand. So a lot of people are hearing. A lot of people are seeing. But they are not understanding. One of the things you must pay for. You want to know that thing you must pay for. It's very expensive. Though. How many people want to know that thing you must pay for? You want to know? Can you pay? You can pay. Pay for attention. Tell somebody, say, pay for attention. Mm -hmm. That's how they say. They say, pay have you wondered why they put pay to attention? Eh? That's the word now. Pay. Have you wondered why they say pay attention? You see, until you have been in a place, a certain kind of place, where it's difficult for you to pay five minutes attention to anything, you will not know how expensive attention is. When the devil has been able to bombard your mind, that's the, let me tell you something. Listen to me. The devil has no power over you. 
The Bible says you will know the truth and the truth will do what? Make you free. But you know, the, 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 the issue is that a lot of Christians don't know the strategy of the warfare. They don't understand the strategy of the warfare. The warfare is not whether you pray or do this or do that. All those things are good. But you see, any prayer you pray that has not affected you, any word you listen to that doesn't affect you, that you don't pay enough attention to, to a light affect you and then you begin to leave it. Don't say leave the Bible out of it. That's why when I see Christians say leave the Bible out of it. You, you, you. How can? That's what makes you. That's your life. That's the essence of your being. That's your strength. That's your covering. That's the manual for your operation. He said, I sent forth my word and my word did what? Heal them. He said the gospel is the power of God unto what? It's not the, hey, hey, hear me. The gospel and the power are not different. Listen, did you hear the way he said it? He said the gospel will lead you to the power of God. Is that what he said? When you hear the gospel, you now get to where the power of God is. Is that what he said? What did he say? Unto what? Hey, see, he said hearing. They did not what? Seeing, they did not what? But you hear and you perceive. I see people that hear and perceive. They hear and understand. They see and they perceive. Glory to God. So you see, what you see, what you hear, you must guard it. Praise God. Let's go back to that second Kings. I want to tell you a few things there. Let's go back there. He said, and then the Lord did what? Open the eyes of the young man. And he did what? He saw. And behold, the mountain was what? Full of what? Horses and chariots of fire. All around Elijah. The person he was afraid for. Master, we are, alas, we are destroyed. Pokoro teke Backrapper. So let me tell you, it's not because of the witches in your society. It's because the devil has succeeded in agree in painting the picture in your heart that the witches have power to destroy you. It's not the power of the witches. It's what you have agreed to. Why? The day you became a Christian, the Bible says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are new. You see, and all these things that are new, they are of who? Of God. Not of the world. Not of Satan. Say they are of who? Of God. That means they should resemble God. You get what I talk? I like to use speech into rap and small. They should resemble who? God. They should resemble the things that happen in the kingdom of God. Lay your hands on your eyes and say, I see. You shall not be deceived. That's why Christian will come and say, I drink, I smoke. Uh -huh. But it has nothing to do with my spirit. The grace of God is out. You lied. You don't know the grace of God. <laughs> you can't open the door for the devil and say the devil will not come. In. The Bible says to whom you yield yourself servant to, it says to whom you are what? Servant of. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You are the offspring of God. You are the seed of Abraham. The life of God is at work in you. You have everything it takes to succeed. And he said, I have given it to you. But you must what? See. Every time you allow what is not, what is not in the word of God to reside in you, is because you have not seen where. He says, it's just drink. There's nothing we drink. It's just womanizing. There's nothing. Someone was telling me how he went somewhere and then most of the workers, some of the workers there, each of them had side cheek. You are a dead man. Did you hear what I said? I said, you are a dead man. You don't know what's, what's up. You are not seeing well. 
If you are seeing well, you should know that. You can't eat with the devil and say that you are a child of God. The fact that you are a child of God cannot be changed. It's not changed except you deny Christ. Are you listening to me? But it's what kind of life will you begin to live? Because if you are seeing well, you will know that the kings cannot be walking on their bare feet and the servants do what? Riding on horses. Because when you begin to dine with side chicks and go to a hotel and carry a prostitute, you don't know yourself. You are not seeing well. Because if you see well, you will know that they that are with you are more than they that are with them. You will know that you cannot carry angels that are around you into the den of hotel and begin to sleep with the prostitute. Do you know who you are? Koko. He said, open his eyes that he might walk. See. Hit somebody for me. Say, see who you are. Get up on your seat and help me to hit. We are preaching together. Hit somebody and tell the person, say, see, see who you are. Your destiny is too great to put it in the hands of Delilah. I say your destiny is too precious to put it in the hands of Delilah. So many people are waiting for me to lay my hands on them. I can't lay the hands I want to lay on the sick on Delilah's lap. Are you listening to me? What do you see about yourself? Hit somebody again and ask the person, say, what do you see? So much is around you. Becky, so much is around you. It's not about anybody. It's about what I see of myself. It's not because of pastor is dead and I do what is right. I got a picture of myself. So whether pastor is there or not, I got to live the way I'm supposed to live. Because I'm conscious of those who are. He said, open his eyes. I see God opening the eyes of a lot of people here. You are walking out of that mess. That mess has rubbished you. It's not God that left you. you. Say, God, why are you not listening to my prayer? I first have... No, 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 no. Change the picture. Tell somebody, say, change that picture. Let me go on. Yes, I still have some things I want to cover. Give me, he say, he say, he say, behold, the mountains was full of horses and chariots. Of fire. Because at that time, what they needed was protection. That was why what they saw was what? Horses and chariots. When God opens your eyes, like he opened the eyes of Hagar, you will also see that the well is beside you. When God opens your eyes to see that the fullness of God, I mean the fullness of God dwells in you bodily. You begin to see that in him you live, in him you move, and in him you have your being. And to the death you have not seen, it's not because it's not available. It's just because you have not tapped in enough to launch into the deep to reach that depth. But there's more in you. There's greatness on the inside of you. You are not ordinary. You know, to some people in the world who the blood of bulls and goats have been shed on, one Baba has sacrificed some nonsense on them. They come out and tell you, do you know who I am? Hey, do you know what was done on your head? I said, do you know what was done on you? The Bible says the lamb was spotless. It said there was nobody that was worthy to open the seal in heaven. But it had to take who? Only that lamb was worthy.
to open the sea. And that same lamb that was worthy, the Bible says he was slain. He said he knew no sin. But he had to pay the sacrifice of being sin for you. He became a man so that he can take your place. The whole of heaven, all the creations of the earth were made by the same man. But because you were valuable, he gave up that life so that you can have a life. And then you sit back and say, you are nobody. You carry that glory into the laps of Delilah. Do you know who you are? This generation is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. This generation is waiting for you. God is not about to prepare your mansion. If man cannot go and start building electricity when you think of buying a house, do you think it's God that the day you get born again, he will not be thinking of building your own house in heaven? He said, go and tell them that all things are ready. All things are what? Ready. All you need to do is do what? See. I only said one point today that can help you see well. And what is that point? The word. Work with people that see, number two. Did you hear me? He said, when you walk with the wise, you become what? Wise. And pastor, we always say, if you are not sensitive, at least listen to those who are what? Sensitive. Walk with the wise. Don't stay at home. Say, I watch it on television. Don't come to church. And you say, it's okay. No, it's not okay. Iron does what? Sharpen it. Iron. And the Bible clearly instructed. He said, don't forsake the assembly of yourselves together. I came here to say to you today, all things are what? Ready. The land is yours. The land is yours. I said, the land is yours. The land is yours. That good health is yours. That good marriage is yours. That wealth is yours. That business is yours. For out of this church, you are raising up those who will stand out as light in their generations. Those who will be the best in their industries. Those who will have the billions and still be serving as ushers. I say, those are the people we are raising here. And I declare today that your eyes begin to see. Your ears hear. Your heart understands. And your eyes perceive.